Good afternoon. We're here today at the physics lab virtually with Tom Campbell, Dr. Farbut Koshnud, Tom's team leader for the experiments, and David Chartrand, a valued research member of the team. Welcome everyone, and thank you for letting me drop into your scheduled meeting to get your feedback on the progress of the experiments so far. For our Kickstarter backers, for the QSAC supporters, and for the science community. Tom, would you lead the discussion? Well, I, I will say just a few words, and that is we are still making progress week by week. Uh, we have these meetings weekly, and every week we solve another problem and take one small step and find out that we need a different piece of equipment or so on. You know, it's a, it's a long, slow process, much longer and much slower than I thought at the beginning. So... We are making progress, though, and we get closer every time we meet. We, we get a little closer to knowing what it is we have to be doing. So with that, I'll let uh, uh, Farbad and, and, and David uh, say uh, uh, whatever they'd like to say about it. Farbad, why don't you tell us about where we are and, and sure. what we have to do next and where we're, where we're going. So previously, uh, if you remember from the previous videos, if you have seen them, we have been using a BBO crystal for splitting the photons, so for quantum entanglement experiment. And now uh, we updated our crystal recently because we found out that the BBO using was only giving us two beams, which is always the have the same polarization for the photons. But now the updated one has two crystals back to back, 90 degree relative to each other rotated. So when we get the photons out, when we split, when the BBO crystal, when the crystal splits the photon, basically it gives us random polarization of the photons right, which we need because then when we go to this side, which is this side of the experiment, we have the crystals, the beam, beam spherical, uh, crystals, which is giving us uh, output, depending on the polarization of the photons, it can go to, to the vertical ones, and which is now coupled uh, with the fiber cables and it's going to the, to the detector. So now this part, the setting up this part with the, with the new BBO crystal and getting the vertical polarization going from Basically, the laser going through these two, the, when it's splitting the photons, going to these two beam splitters, and then the vertical ones go to the vertical direction, horizontal one going to the horizontal. So this one now, we need a, it's a new challenge for us to, to find the best kind of alignment that can get the more accurate date. So at the moment, we are working on that. So that's the latest work. We are making some progress and slowly, slowly getting better and better data. Okay, well, let me just add a little to that in case the listeners are a little confused about what you just said, Farbad. And yeah, that sorry. is, <laughs> and, and that is the, that the way that we are determining the which way data, that is which slit that the, that the particle goes through, is by looking at the idler particle, which is one of the two uh, particles that are entangled, and we're looking at its polarization. Okay, they're in, their polarization is entangled, so if one of them is horizontal, the other one's going to be vertical and vice versa. So by looking at the polarization, we can tell which slit that the particle went through. So that's our which way data. So that's what Farbot's talking about. We had a, a crystal that broke, uh, that created the entangled pairs, the BBO, and that was not giving us the kind of polarization that we, that we needed. So though we were getting entangled pairs and though we were measuring them, it really wasn't what the experiment required. So now we've gotten a different BBO crystal and we're just learning now how to get that aligned and integrate it into the experiment. And Farbad, just before Donna got here, was explaining about how there was a piece of test equipment that he needed to help set up the experiment and get it all aligned because the alignment here is a very critical and sensitive part. 
if you don't have your detectors in exactly the right place, you're not going to see what it is you're looking for. If you move them just a few hair breadths one way or the other, or twist them or don't have them oriented right, then you're not going to get a very strong signal. So you need some, some ways to calibrate and align the equipment so that when you do the experiment, you've optimized the, the, the nice clean signal that you need to get nice clean results. So that's kind of where we are. We're still searching for the now kind of setup equipment, if you like, equipment that'll help us set up and align rather than actual experimental equipment. And uh, Farbod just got a lead on that. And as, as Donna arrived, we were trying to figure out where could we find this thing and, and uh, you know, where could we buy it? And we saw all sorts of things at very high prices, but that, that wasn't what we wanted. We're looking for something less expensive that will do the, the job. So that's kind of what was going on today just before Donna got here. So David, do you have anything to uh, no, Thank you. I just to want that? to say thank you to Tom for explaining. <laughs> the best person also to explain all the experimental detail in terms of uh, showing us all the process and the with the graphics and so I think that he's also the best person to explain the in, in better in more detail. Oh, really? I, I don't think I have uh, anything to add. Uh, Except if you, if you if you want me to show uh, maybe the the diagram with the crystals and uh, yes, talk yes. about sure the, sure do that if you have that yes, can show that uh, yeah, I think the you, readers would like to see that. Can you give me access to share my screen, please? Oh, I thought I did that already, but I will do it again. Yes. Okay. It works. Uh, so just very quickly. Um, this is what uh, Farbud was explaining. Now we, we will be using uh, two crystals. So these are the two crystals uh, that we bought and uh, Farbud installed. Uh, and it allows us to send uh, photons. Uh, so the, the laser sends uh, photons that goes through um, a, filter, a polarizing filter uh, that ensure that we have a diagonally polarized uh, photons. And, uh, and then when these photons go through the crystals, uh, some of them will be converted into an entangled paired. And this is uh, the formula that represents the entangled pair of photons. So when uh, one is horizontal, the other one is vertical and, uh, and uh, vice versa. So this is what we are trying to achieve. But now that we have that exactly like uh, Farbud uh, was explaining and Tom, the challenge is to align because the, the angle between these two photons is very, very small. And we need to to find a way to make sure that they reach the detector uh, at the right spot. So the equipment we're looking for now is a way to uh, to send the photon backward backwards. So basically, starting from the detector and sending fo photons through the setup back to the crystal and align it this way. So this is our new tip, and this is uh, what we are working on. Thank you. Well, thank you, David, and thank you, Farbod. Um, so you really just need one more piece of equipment to get that alignment correct and, and very uh, precise. Yeah. I also developed a lecture based on uh, what we just discussed for our students. So that uh, video also is available on YouTube on my channel. So explaining all these things, uh, I was explaining to one in one of my courses to all, everything to the students, so that's also available just in case. Oh, that's fantastic! If you could give if us a people link want to include that to see that uh, more detail. That's a one-hour lecture uh, that I delivered to my student. That's uh, there's more information in there. Oh, very nice. What's, what's the link to that, What's the link to your channel, uh, Farbad? How do you? Get it's just my channel? name. Uh, if 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 you just check, uh, like type my name on YouTube. And then uh, the the name of that particular, uh, if I find it quickly, the name of that particular video, which is a lecture to my course, um, it's a one-hour video which includes also students in that. Uh, and it's the interesting part about that is one, when I'm explaining this experiment to the students, I give access to the student to remotely uh, to have to manipulate some of the half wave plates and polarizers using a motor. So the access through Zoom 
my laptop in the lab. So while they were sitting at home and they were having uh, basically control over the, the, some of the equipment in the lab. So they could move, rotate the polarizer, which I can show you what kind of polarizer they are using. So instead of just the regular polarizer, that I use. So instead of the regular one, I use the one that can be rotated by motor. So I connect that to my laptop using this cable and rotate the polarizer rather than rotate it by hand. So a student remotely could do that, rotate the polarizer at home and collect data from the similar experiments that I'm teaching. So that video is available if you like to see, and there's a lecture in the beginning it's called quantum entanglement and cryptography experiment. Uh, and then dash quantum engineering for mechatronics and autonomy. So because we are all, we are engineers, we're also interested not only in the physics, but also application to engineer. <laughs> so. Thank you, that's, that's fascinating. And thank you. I have you, the link in the chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, Tom, do you have anything to wrap this up with for our, for our science community? No, I just would ask them to be patient. We are, you know, I guess I've asked for a lot of patience. <laughs> this has been going yeah. on now for about a year and a half worth of patience, but be patient. It is coming. This is real science. It takes time and uh, we're going to get to the result as soon as we can. And uh, right now I, I don't particularly want to promise how long that'll be because I'm always wrong. It looks like we might even get this, you know, first results out by the end of the year. But I've made statements like that before, and then I've had to, you know, change them and slide it off, slide the schedule off to the right again and again. So I'm kind of hesitant to do that, but it's looking like we're getting closer, you know, to the end. So it's, it's important. We always make progress. So. Uh, although even we don't have the final answer yet, but we always make progress small. small. Yeah. So that's, that's very promising always. So we never. Yeah. yeah. So have patience and we'll let you know next, next time Donna will come back again. What next month? Then uh, hopefully we'll, we'll maybe have a, be, be really close to having this experiment work. I hope so. But That'll we'll be see. <laughs> I'll be back next month. Thank you all yeah. so much. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.